Section 5-3, Binomial Distributions. The main idea here is to highlight a special discrete probability distribution called the binomial distribution. The key feature of these distributions is to be able to deal with scenarios where outcomes are limited to two categories. The binomial probability distribution has four main criteria. One, the procedure must have a fixed number of trials. Two, each trial must be independent. Three, the outcomes of each trial is categorized into one of two categories. And four, the probabilities of each trial what must remain constant throughout. Some basic notation, we will refer to the two categories as success and failure. We use S for success and F for failure. For each of these events, there is an assigned probability. The probability of success will be little p. Note that the failure is a complement of success, so the probability of failure is 1 minus p. We will use q for this value. To summarize this notation, we have n to denote the number of fixed trials. x is the random variable that counts the number of successes in n trials. P is the probability of success, and Q is the probability of failure. We'll use P of X as the probability of getting exactly X successes in N trials. A couple of points of caution. Make sure that X and P are associated with a success. Also, when sampling without replacement, we would consider the trials to be independent if the number of trials is smaller than 5% of the population. Let's take a look at an example. Suppose there, are eight, there is an 85% chance that a person knows about Twitter. If we randomly select five adults, let's find the probability that exactly three out of five of them know about Twitter. Is this a binomial distribution? Well, there are five trials. Each trial is independent. Each trial has two outcomes. Either they know Twitter or they don't. And there is a constant 85% probability that a person knows about Twitter. So yes, this is a probability distribution. So how will we find this probability? One method is to use the formula. This is the formula for the binomial distribution. Although this is being covered first, it is actually should be your last resort. Now that you've seen the formula, we'll just skip over this. The second method is to use technology. Here are a couple of screenshots of StatDisk, one of the publishers provided programs. The other is Minitab, a popular statistics program. Then there is Excel and the calculator. The calculator will be our preferred method. There is a third method that's available in this text, and that is to use tables. Tables are used before fancy technologies became easy and affordable. It has become obsolete, but it still can be an option. The basic strategy would be to use technology.
Let's go back to that Twitter example again. Suppose we want to find the probability that exactly three out of five adults know of Twitter. In this example, we use the calculator. We press second and vars, then the down arrow until you get to the command. The command we'll use is binome pdf. This command takes n, the p, and the x values. We punch this into our calculators and we get 0 0.1382. So if you randomly select five people, the probability that exactly three of them know of Twitter is about 13.8%. Section 5-4, Parameters for Binomial Distributions. The basic idea here is to find our descriptive statistics, the mean, variance, and standard deviation. We will also interpret these values with respect to usual and unusual values. If you remember the formulas for the parameters for other types of discrete distributions, they look pretty complicated. The sum of x times p of x, for example. For binomial distributions, these parameters are a lot simpler. The mean, or expected value, is n times p. The variance is n times p times q and the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. Once we have the mean and standard deviation, we can invoke the range rule of thumb. Within two standard deviations of the mean would be the set of usual values. Let's take a look at an example. Suppose we know that 95% of the people can recognize the McDonald's symbol. Suppose you select 12 adults. What is the expected value or the mean? Also find the standard deviation. We have n, which is 12, and the probability, which is 0 0.95. So the mean is 12 times 0 0.95, and that is 11.4. So out of 12 people, we should expect about 11 of them to know or be familiar with the McDonald's symbol. The standard deviation is 0 0.8. Using the range rule of thumb, the usual values turns out to be between 9.8 to 13 people. This means for 12 people, it would be unusual to have less than 9 people to recognize the McDonald's logo. That's the end of Chapter 5.